making our way through the market, spotted another stall selling something that looked pretty interesting. So we ordered up this, and this is deep fried bananas that have been fried with uh, caramelized brown sugar. Just a very small, humble stall on the side of the road with some fresh looking bananas. So I'm gonna try it out. Oh wow. Yep. That is really good. There is a sweetness from that brown sugar that has been kind of caked onto the outside and then a sourness from those uh, bananas, almost like a little bit tart. And you can see that they're like cooked all the way through. So they've lost their mushy banana texture and sort of turn almost like halfway between a banana and like a cake because it's a little bit sort of doughy feeling, but it's really delicious. And hot. This is called pastil, a 10 peso meal. That's 10 pesos. One of the cheapest meals in Asia. 10 pesos, that's like 18 cents. 18 cents for a meal? Yeah, it has rice, it has uh, shredded chicken, it's like adobo style. No way, that's crazy. That's probably the cheapest food in Asia. I've never seen anything that cheap for an entire meal with rice. So let's order one up, see what we can get for 18 cents. Okay, let's see what 18 cents US gets you here in the Philippines, Manila. Look at that. Well, you know what? I wasn't expecting much, but this is pretty small. <laughs> you said a meal, but uh, I don't know if this is totally a meal, but luckily we've already eaten tons today. So what exactly is this, Chewy? It's like adobo style, so it's shredded chicken. So compared to other meals that you have one whole piece of chicken, right. this is shredded so it can be distributed to a lot of people. Uh, okay. especially, in, yeah, especially in the province of Marawi. Sprinkle of chili oil, a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty tiny, but still, like, come on, what can you get for 18 cents? in America, like what? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I don't think you could buy anything for 18 cents. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that might be the best thing we've eaten today. <laughs> that is the best thing we tasted today, hands down. Damn, beautiful adobo flavor. Seriously one of the Philippines' most famous foods, right? Yeah, street food. Typical street food, so we've got a bucket full of them here. So this is the 17, eight, uh, 17 days old, it's very hot. They're very hot. So how do you cook them, boil? Boil. boil them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very hot. Oh How God. many minutes? Bo? More than one hour. More than one hour. Oh, you hour. boil them That's for why one it's hour. Very hot. So we have to crack it open. Yeah. On, on this the side. Top. Yes. Okay. So just. <laughs> it's not too solid. Okay. And then just All peel right. back. Peel it off. Yeah. Yep. You can see right away it that embryo inside. <laughs> oh, that's the soup. Yeah. Okay, it's so delicious. that's good stuff too. We have yeah. To put salt first. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. You show me, Kit. So just like Shao Long Bao, right? You open Shao Long Bao, <laughs> soup dumplings. You open things and then you put oh, something. Bit. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it's very, very juicy. There's a little film on the top, but I can already see the embryo going on in there, but we're gonna shoot this back, I guess. Mm. Oh, it's mm. What? Mm. Tell me. <laughs> no, seriously, it is. It tastes like a duck stock very good yum okay very rich I'm now I'm just worried about the texture I don't know I know now I know about the taste but I don't know about the texture so that's gonna be my next thing I gotta overcome here so just keep peeling it okay off. look at that guys you can see the I don't even know what's going on there <laughs> something that's the white part that's the white part and the yellow part that's all we can identi identify the egg yolk. okay is there even an egg yolk? Oh, oh. Karia was just telling me this is the, the perfect balut. Why is this one perfect? It's perfect balut because it's coated by... Do you see the white one? It's the coated white. by this white yeah. part? Yeah, you okay. cannot see the hair. You cannot see the hair. <laughs> okay, a little bit of salt. And then vinegar. Vinegar too? Yeah. Okay. A little bit vinegar. How do I bite this? Yeah, you just bite it. Vinegar. Oh. Okay. Wouldn't be the Philippines if there was no vinegar. The whole thing? Yeah. All right, my first balut. Tastes good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's a strange texture. It's really hard. If you're a balut expert, if you know that it's already hard, you don't eat the stone. I that's ate the, the white, stone. That's the white part. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> You have to experience that. <laughs> it's like half creamy, half crunchy. Whoa. This is something I could see myself eating like 2 a.m. 
after a long night of drinking. It's like 10 a.m. right now, so it is what it is. It's the texture that uh, takes a little getting used to. That's just like a protein bomb. There's a lot of protein in that. We are sitting down at our next restaurant and this is a really, really tiny place and it's only got two tables. The name of it is called Nu Po Heng and they're serving lumpia, which is like a Chinese style spring roll. So you can see it here. There is just tons of ingredients. It's really, really hot. There is ground peanuts, lettuce, cabbage, carrots, all sorts of vegetables. And then there's also ground uh, pork and also tofu inside. So let me break into it and try it here. Mm. Wow. That is really good. There's a lot going on in there. All kinds of different crunchy and soft textures and then everything's held together with that wrap really nicely, which has sort of like an elasticity to it. And it's got definitely a sweetness too. I love all of this cabbage. I think it might be pickled cabbage because it's got a little bit of a sort of like juicy, slightly sour crunch to it. And then we've also got this uh, raw garlic vinegar dip here. This stuff looks seriously strong, so I'll try to go a little easy on it. Let's try that. Mm. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're gonna try the squid next. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> the squid is just absolutely packed full of stuff. Look at that. Tons of stuff in there. Celery, we have onions, uh, onion leaves, and tomatoes. Okay, I'll just kind of take a cross section here. I'm gonna lose a lot of filling there, but <laughs> take it back. Oh, stuck. It's like squid on steroids. <laughs> yeah. This is a crazy squid. Oh man. You're not gonna one bite that, are you? It depends on your mouth. It depends how big on your mouth is, but I think I can do it. I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Just be a challenge. I don't think it's gonna work. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Whoa. There's a lot of fresh veggies going on there. That actually might be like the most vegetables I've ever seen in a Filipino food before. You guys are like the meat, fried, rice, eggs. I don't see a whole ton of dishes with fresh veggies like that. I'm not a huge squid lover, but that's dominated by the flavor of the fresh celery in there. I can taste the onions, there's peppers, all kinds of things, cilantro. Actually, that's really, really good too. I've never even seen that dish before today. I'm not a huge squid lover. But that was really good. What's this here? Uh, it's an extra barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce, okay, yeah. Go for a snip. Mm. It's super smoky. That was probably the least flattering <laughs> one bite I've ever done on camera. <laughs> Maybe 13 years. 13 uh, based for this, uh, how, how many years I've been working with it. I see. Yeah, more yeah. yeah. tunnel. Uh, he, he started here in the USA and then he... He said Taiwan is very, you know. So I'm with Mang Toots here and we're going to try his famous banana ramma. Right. And uh, we just saw how they're made. It's, it's kind of like a spring roll or a lumpia. So it's first a couple pieces of banana wrapped up in a wrapper. And now we're just making the sauce. And you're saying there's all kinds of different ingredients in here. Yeah. Jackfruit, banana essence, but banana the, flavor, yeah. cinnamon, sugar, pineapple juice. But the key or one of the main ingredients too is, is the rum, right? Rum, yeah. Yeah. And I can smell it. So we're caramelizing the sauce now and then we're going to toss in, in the banana rama into this, right? Yes. And get that coated. So it will be like a heavy caramel. Very so good that uh, it will be uh, heavy coated in the banana. To get all so that on, flavor yeah. on there. And this smells so good, guys. I can smell the cinnamon, you can smell the banana. You get a little bit of that rum essence in there. Man, that smells good. I can't wait to try this out. Really unique. And you've been selling this for how many years? Wow, it's almost uh, 13 years. 13 years. Oh, yes. And he's selling like 10,000 a day. Yeah. Crazy. So these are super popular. Thank you, you know, for having us. Before the before pandemic, I sold out maybe 14,000 a day. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just make the half of these. Yeah, you can see they're all individual, yeah. almost like little spring rolls there. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful caramelizing sauce. 
Oh my gosh. That looks so good. Smells incredible. Yeah. We sell it until we start uh, cooking uh, nine or eight o'clock in the morning until uh, seven o'clock in the evening. And what is this? This is the uh, concoction of rum, banana, banana essence to make it uh, smell good and banana oh, yeah. flavor. That smells so good. To the make it rum. sticky. Yeah. To make it sticky. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see it's starting to coat completely. Yes. And then we will put some sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are really nice. That looks so, so good. Oh my okay. Gosh. Look at how gooey and delicious those are looking. Completely coated in that. Beautiful, beautiful sauce. Oh my gosh. Is it better to eat them when they're hot like this or should you wait for them to cool down? Uh, I think it's cooled down already, now, yeah. but I have some spoon. And where is the... Uh, so friendly. This is the, composed of cinnamon, white sugar, and uh, milk boy, or we, we call it skim milk. Oh, like powdered milk. Yeah. Okay. But this one, we uh, when, when there's a lot of orders, we separate this one because, you know, it makes soft when it takes uh, when we put this one already. Oh, okay, so you can't. You gotta Not add it last. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. got gotcha. you. It's time to try. Yes. Let's try together. Yeah. This uh, this is like a freshman food because I'm from the University of Santa Tomas, the, the university in France. So if you're a freshman, it's like it's a must try. It's yeah. mandatory to eat yeah. the banana ram of mangoes. During your degree, yeah. how many of these do you think you ate? I don't know. I think my DNA has a lot of banana ram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe right. hundreds. <laughs> cheers. Oh, no, cheers. Yeah. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, cheers. We try together. My first cheers. time here. Cheers. Thank you. Mm. Oh my god. Oh yeah. The banana. Perfectly ripe on the inside. It's almost got a little bit of a sourness in the banana on the inside, but then that exterior is sweet, gooey. You taste yeah. the essence of the rum. Mm. That is phenomenal. Oh my god. And it's like very uncommon to see a uh, toron that is usually this size. Because usually yeah. the toron is a big size. Mm -hmm. so this is a bite size. These are perfect little one perfect. bite. Yeah. Explosion mm. of flavors in your mouth. Oh my god, guys. Wow. Mm. Another, please. Yeah. <laughs> the little bits of sesame on the outside add a, just a hint of sesame flavor and then you get that sweet cinnamon on the outside. Oh my god. Gosh. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Chewy's brought me to a really famous spot here in the Muslim town. They're serving rendang, and look at this bubbling pot of chicken rendang. I can see lots of chilies in there. That smells so good. Most of the food here in Muslim town, the main ingredient is called palapa. It's like a condiment, a spice. Okay. So it's made from... Uh, this one. Oh yeah. Sakurab. sakurab. This is sakurab. sakurab. White, white scallions. White scallions. This is the main oh, ingredient. Okay. Really interesting. I saw it this all one. over the place here yeah. in the Muslim town. So this is the main ingredient in their rendang here. Still trying to kind of wrap my head around the fact that we're having a Malaysian and Indonesian food tour in the heart of Manila here. But rendang is one of my favorite foods in the entire world. It's just served with a yellow rice here. So let's try it out. This looks so, so good. Man, that pot is just beautiful. Anytime a restaurant hands you a plastic glove like this, it's a good sign. Except my hand's way too sweaty to get inside this thing. Oh. Okay, man, this looks so good. It's completely doused in chilies. Yep. Oh, and super, super hot. So uh, this is made from coconut milk, right. burnt coconut. They have the turmeric. It's a little bit different than the rendang I've had in Indonesia before. This one's got less of a sweetness, more of a saltiness, and the coconut is still kind of in this like raw form on the outside. You get a little bit of like gritty crunch on the outside. The flavor is coming from the palapa. Because the palapa, it has turmeric, it has ginger, onions, mm -hmm. and uh, white scallions. Mm -hmm. And the greatest thing, this is just 25 pesos. This is like a real filling hearty meal too. Like I mean, look, they, they pack this thing full. 
man. It's that coconut grittiness. I love the texture of the coconut on the outside of the chicken. What a local spot. They've just got like a tarp on the side of the street, a couple of wooden benches, a couple of plastic chairs. It's sort of underneath this ramshackle building, but that does not mean they're not serving quality food. This stuff is seriously good. You can see the customers lining up to get their hands on some of this beautiful chicken rendang. Seriously, seriously good, guys. Mm. Give it a try. Cheap and delicious. Really good. What is mala? Sweet or salty? So we just left the Lumpia restaurant and as soon as we walked outside there was a man uh, hawking something and I didn't know what it was but Key tells me that this is quite a rare uh, street food. So you can see here this is called Pinatog and it's got uh, corn so there's white corn at the bottom there. This is the sweet version so there's also a savory version, coconut on top and then lots of condensed milk and it's served hot and he is dinging his little horn there or dinging his little bell I mean on his... Uh, bicycle so he's selling it right out of the back of his bicycle pretty cool so let's try it out here mm. yeah it's almost like a sweet creamed corn and then with a little hint of sort of like tropical flavor from that coconut it is quite sweet there's a lot of condensed milk in there you can see but that corn is soft and still has a little bit of a bite but it is nice and soft so it's easy to eat and he's trying to get all the customers in with this bell here. On the team. So they've got two bubbling pots of soup. What kind of soup are they serving here? It's Good. called bulalo. Bulalo. It's a huge beef bone soup. Beef and bone. we love this, especially in the rainy days, cold like mm -hmm. December month. Yeah, I can smell that they're cooking it on charcoal. Yep. Which I love here in the Philippines. They're doing it even in like a nice kind of modernish place like this. They're still doing it in a traditional way, using the charcoal like that. And look, this place is a neighborhood. So Laonlan is like a area or neighborhood in Manila. So this is uh, very local. Right. Uh, a lot of people from their house go here just to take out some bulalo. Okay, I can't wait to try this. I've never tried bulalo, but I can see these bubbling pots. I can see big chunks of beef in there. So let's order one up. It's let's gonna go. be perfect for this rainy weather. Ta-ra. That is just an absolute monster chunk of beef snipping up into manageable pieces. And the broth, I can see green chilies, garlic, I can see some black peppercorns floating around in there, bubbling around. Oh, that looks so, so good. This will block our artery, so I'm kinda nervous. <laughs> just go for a small piece at least. Mix it with some of that beef. Oh, this is so packed, it's overflowing. There's so much going on in there. That is a phenomenal soup. It's so perfectly like balanced. It's, it's really fatty with that bone marrow, of course, but the broth is clean and it's it's simple, so it kind of just like cuts through it, mixes with the beef perfectly. Oh my god. Actually, bro, the mo one of the most defining fish of bolalo is a soup. If the soup is good, that's a good sign. This is because a good we soup. Filipinos, we like we love some rice. Right. So sometimes what we do, we oh, just yeah. put some soup on the rice. On the rice, no meat, and then we'll just eat. And then after we finish one rice, we'll get another rice. That's the time we will eat the meat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're being resourceful. I can do that all day too. I love the soup with the rice. Oh, it reminds me a little bit of Hansi, which mm. I tried in Bacala. Similar, but this one's got a different, more beefy, cleaner t flavor. Actually, you're right. Kansi is a bulalo, but it is like a uh, more sour. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. got that ajiote uh, taste in it, a little bit sour. Oh my god, though, guys, I love Filipino soups from Sinigang to Bulalo, Kansi. They're all pretty much my favorite Filipino foods of them all. Oh my god, I love it. There are different kinds of bulalos in uh, in the Philippines. In each province, they have their own version of bulalo. Mm. So this one, this is like a Metro Manila style kind of bulalo. Yeah. 
oh, this is such a good version. So I'm stealing all of the, the bone marrow for myself. Sorry, Chewy. No, it's okay. <laughs> I can have it every day. <laughs> oh my God. This isn't the chicharron that I am used to, which is usually like the pork skin crackling fried. This is chicharron bulaklak. You can see it right here. It's really tight in here, but basically it's the pig's mesentery, which is a cut of the uh, organs. And then it's fried up super, super crispy. They've got it boiling, one pot of it boiling, and then one pot of it frying until it's super crunchy, crispy. That is the chicharron bulaklak. They call it like the flower because it sort of blooms up like a flower and also cooking right on charcoal. Super hot in here. Look at how just narrow this place is. All natural vinegar. Take a little dip, the bulaklak. A little chili in there too. I can feel it's gonna be super crunchy. Mm. Very good. It tastes really kind of fatty, oily on the inside. With the vinegar, awesome. The vinegar almost tastes like alcoholic. <laughs> I love vinegar here in the Philippines. That's so crunchy on the outside, but then really smooth, kind of oily on the inside. Yum. This Big is the intestines. Thin. Okay. Okay, so this is an, another type of, what did you call chicharron? Pitua. Pitua. So it's like the, the intestines, different cut. Again, gotta go for the vinegar. Everything in the Philippines, you gotta go for the vinegar. Oh, that one has like no soft bits at all. Crunchy the whole way through. Yum. That's delicious. This is salty and kind of like super crunchy, kind of melts in your mouth. And then the, the mesentery, the bulak muk, it's got like a oily kind of chewy layer on the inside. Yum, that's awesome. So what is this key? Yeah, it's a soft silky tofu with like uh, caramelized brown sugar and pearls. We call it taho. It is warm in my hand actually. I didn't expect it to be warm. I, I, Usually when I think of silken tofu, I think of dohua, which is served cold usually. So you can see there's also some pearls on the top, little like kind of boba, and then there's caramelized brown sugar on the inside. So I'm just gonna go in for a drink. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I feel like there's a little bit of almost coffee flavor going on in there from that caramelized brown sugar. Very, very silky smooth. And then those bobas have a little bit of a chewiness to them. And I like how it's warm. And it's really uh, nice and kind of hearty to have for breakfast. So this is um, the dessert, it's called inutak. So inutak comes from the word utak, which means brains, because it resembles the, oh, yeah? the brain. But it's actually just... It's glutinous rice cake yeah. with coconut. Okay. And you should be able to eat it with um, ice cream. Specialty dishes in Pate. Oh, okay. So yeah. let's try this with the ice cream. In. So awesome. go for a little, I'm gonna go for a spoonful and then a spoonful of the inutak, which you can see is like toasted on top here, or baked with a nice crispy layer. It should be very gooey and so Yeah, very gooey. So that's the glutinous rice. Finally something I want to eat. Mmm. <laughs> ha oh, ha oh, ha, oh, yeah. Mmm. It's like hot mochi. Really gooey. It coats your mouth completely. Wow. It's sticky. Yeah, it's still hot. That's so good. Mmm. He is going to be taking the other 16 balut that we have. Back home to her family, just so you know, we're not wasting it. We got a whole tub of ice cream here. When it's still warm. Yeah. Mmm. That is damn good. Thank you so much. Hey. See you next time. What is lechon called, Wally? So this is a different kind of lechon. The usual lechon that you can see in the internet is a whole roasted pig. But this one, it's like the belly and deep fried. Deep so, super crispy. We, we call it lechon kawale because kawale in English is like the pan, uh, like the wok. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's being lechon in the wok, deep fried lechon belly. They got huge slabs of it right here. This one's already finished cooking. These are the uncooked ones, and then she just dropped another slab in there. Look at it boiling away. Oh my gosh. This restaurant is so narrow. It's just taking up this entire alley. They're frying the lechon there. They've got a little station here where they're cooking the soup and then you can see all of the customers lined up along the side here. Really tight quarters. We're gonna try to find a seat and order up the lechon koali and then also their famous soup too.
the food has arrived. We are sat down. We've got all kinds of different things. I think they brought us pretty much one of everything. <laughs> so this is their famous dish though, the lechon kuali. It's the same thing as Cantonese shu yuk. So it's got that super crispy fried pork skin on the outside, fatty pork belly on the inside. Got a sauce here. What is this sauce? It's like a sweet, sweet sauce? sticky sauce. Oh, you're completely drenching it, huh? Yeah, okay. that's the style. Okay, a, little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, shredded papaya. Shredded papaya, oh, really cool, okay. Seriously crunchy, fatty, very fatty. That sauce is nice and sweet. The garlic from the garlic rice, yeah. That's super crunchy, man. This is the ultimate tondo comfort food. Yeah. I mean, if you're fishing tondo, even the even my like my uncles and aunties go here because this is, like, this is a heritage food. Yeah. 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 Look at this. They also gave us an extra piece of just the skin. <laughs> here, let me share this with you. Oh. <laughs> You hear that? Oh my god. That is so crunchy, man. So we're at this really cool kind of laid back local restaurant and we've got a dish that I've been really excited to try called goto. So you can see it here. It's sort of like a rice porridge and then this one has beef in it and there should be some yeah beef blood as well. So it looks like maybe some fried uh, garlic on top and I can smell a lot of ginger coming from that and it's served nice and piping hot. On the side over here we've got a mixture of uh, crispy pork belly so you can see that super crispy pork belly there with some onions and then also some fried tofu and it's sort of swimming in what looks to be like a soy sauce maybe with some vinegar this looks really good so let's dig in mm. oh oh yum it's a little bit salty gingery and the rice has a really nice texture the rice is very very soft there's a little bit of a kick to some spice there too that, that is really good let's go in and find a piece of beef here I'm gonna try the beef with some of it. Mm. It's got a lot more flavor than kanji. It's very, very flavorful and very gingery. Okay, I gotta try this side dish. This dish looks really, really good. So I'm gonna get some of that crispy pork belly and then some of the uh, tofu too. Mm. Wow, that is extremely crunchy. The skin of that fried pork belly is like a chip, and also that fried tofu is quite crunchy as well, so it's a nice contrast to the really smooth and soft goto. Actually, this is really, really good, and just such a humble little restaurant that we're sitting in, serving some seriously delicious food. Mm. That's just so comfort, comforting home cook tasting. Wow. Mama Ting's, it's a takeout restaurant only and we have their specialty, I think it's the only thing they sell, and that's like a stuffed milkfish. I don't really know what to expect, but also it comes with these uh, pickles here. So, looks like uh, some carrots, onions, maybe some other stuff in there. And it smells kind of spicy actually. It's quite a large box and, oh yeah, look at that. So you can see, there's some, it looks like a full fish in here. If I can kind of slide it out without breaking it. Oh yeah, look at that, it is just a full milk fish. And this has been stuffed with uh, something, I'm not exactly sure, but let me break into the side here and try to get a bite. Okay. And then I'm gonna also grab some pickles down here and put them on top. Let's try that. really interesting it has like a natural sweetness to it the pickles are crunchy but the fish itself is really soft it's not what I was expecting at all you can kind of see here if I pull it apart a little bit more that it's actually almost like a meatloaf but it's like a fish meatloaf it's it's all right it's not my favorite this flavor is quite strong and fishy let's go for one more bite The texture is really interesting. It is similar to a meatloaf. Uh, 
We are doing a ton of eating today and we just stopped at our next little hole in the wall shop and they are serving something called Siu Pao. So this is sort of like the Filipino Chinese version of a Shenzhen Bao or a Baozi. So it's steamed first and then you can see on the bottom that it's been fried and I'm gonna bite into this. I'm guessing there's pork inside, maybe a little bit of green onions too, so let's try it. It smells really, really good and I'm gonna kind of break it open here so we can see inside. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, so there's a big like meatball almost on the inside. Mmm. Oh, that is really yummy. So tons of flavor there. It is quite juicy on the inside. It's not really crispy on the bottom. It's more just fluffy from being steamed. And I guess this is some turnip that is inside of it. It's got a little bit of a crunch and then that meat is just very tender. It's pretty good. Yeah, I love the turnip in there. It gives it a nice crisp crunch. This is called doodul. Doodul. It's not fireworks. It's called doodul. <laughs> it's a red glutinous sticky rice okay. with coconut milk. So he's making it right on the side of the street here. He's got a big pot full of it. And then uh, it's going to be sweet. Yeah, it's a dessert. Yeah, this is amazing. I've tried this before. Okay, let's try let's it. Go. So this is the doodle. It doodle. kind of looks like almost like a sausage. We're trying to <laughs> unwrap it. It is really gift wrapped here. Look at that. So it's glutinous rice, sugar, coconut milk you coconut said too? Coconut milk, yeah. Oh. <laughs> what does that look like to you? <laughs> it's up to you if you want to make it hard. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. There's some crunchy pieces inside too. It's basically mochi. It is mochi. It's so sticky. <laughs> Jeez. It's like clean. Mm. Actually, it's really good. One of my favorite desserts. Can you find this in other parts of Manila or no. pretty much only here in the Muslim Only town? here. Wow. You can see it's cooking on charcoal right on the side of the street here. And it's got a really neat texture between chewy, but then also there's some crunchy bits, which apparently are kind of the bits that stick to the bottom of the pan, which are really good. What do you call this? Sinigang. Sinigang. And this is a tamarind soup. So uh, a little bit sour, I'm guessing. We got all kinds of different ingredients, but the main thing, this was made with the fish's head, right? Yes. Yeah, the fish's head. We've got, looks like some turnips, water spinach, all kinds of goodies. So let's start with the sinigang, and this is a pretty famous uh, Filipino dish, right? Yeah, this is our, like our Filipino favorite sour soup. Sour soup. Yeah. So I'm just gonna start with the broth. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's good. It's really sour. <laughs> yeah, the tamarind really cuts through. And then there's a little slight flavor of the fish. The good. sourness is gonna go well with rice. With rice, yeah. Mm. It is very sour. Yes. And a little bit salty. It's good. With the fish off, yeah. yeah. also called Paris Usok. In English means Paris smoke because they're using wood fire which is very seldom here in Manila. Uh, wood fire is being used in provinces like that old school way but here they're using they're using it. So, so smoked Paris. Yeah smoky Paris All like right. Paris Usok. And I see that they've got like a bone like bone marrow too. Yeah they have bone marrow like this is like an innovation because Filipino love uh, food that will make your cholesterol high. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. This is a really, really local spot. It's just set up right on the sidewalk here, all open and outdoor seating. There's tons of people working here. Jim's better. It's been around for a long time, like Chewie was just saying. And uh, they have tons of customers, even though we're here at their off hour. So Paras is like a slow cooked beef. But then here, like Chewie was just saying, it's smoked beef and then it's served just with rice, very typical Filipino food. So let's order one up, try it out. This place is really, really cool, super local. We're kind of standing in like a shed. Yep. <laughs> this is 24 hours. 24 hours. So Paris is the food for every time. I mean, breakfast, lunch, dinner, midnight snack, after you get uh, drunk, <laughs> you eat this. Or early in the morning, anytime yeah. you want. And this is not like the Paris that I've seen before. This one's really soupy. It's like thin broth, right? And uh, the ones I've seen before have been a lot thicker, but I can see tons of smoked beef, right? Smoked beef. And then we're gonna transfer that right onto the rice. Oh man. I can smell it already. Cheers, Cheers man. Oh yeah. Oh wow. It's so beefy. Nice. Yeah. It's like concentrated beef flavor. 
Oh man, really tender too. It's a uh, different attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, compared to the original traditional Paris, yeah. this one's like the Bulalo style, very like also smoky mm -hmm. because of the firewood. And it tastes a little bit like cleaner, a little bit lighter <laughs> flavor than mm. some of the other Paris. It's really <laughs> thick. I'm gonna smoke for one more bite. Yep. This is like my personal choice. I put some calamansi okay. to add some citrus. Lots of calamansi here in the yeah. Philippines. I love it. So delicious. Adds a citrusy, orangey flavor. And then what do you got there? A bunch of Wait. chili? And then I got some chilies here. Oh man. That is looking spicy. Look at this bowl of chili. Fresh chilies, huh? Let's try that with a little bit of the calamansi. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Classic. Yep. Man, I love the flavor of that calamansi. It's like orangey, citrusy. Gives a little sourness. That's why a lot of uh, people or Filipinos come here. You can just drench the the rice with that soup. That's one of my favorite things in the world. It's kind of like a soupy rice with all that flavor in the rice. Oh my god, it's good. Man. That is a solid bowl of Paris. Yep. And what a cool place too. 24 hours, come and get your Paris fix any time of day. It's unlimited soup. Unlimited soup? Yeah, so for example... Free refill. Yeah, free refill. Oh. Right on. This is always one of my favorite Filipino foods. It's just so classic, simple, home cooked, but it's just full of flavor. The beef is so tender at this spot, Jim's amazing. Mm. Oh man. You can hear it because yeah. of the sound? Because of the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ready? And this one is not good. No, no. Because the sound is bad. What's going on with this one? Why is this one blue? And this one, the sound is good. Yeah, it's a little bit hollow. It's not sticking yes. to the side. <laughs> and play the drums. What? Play the drums. Yes. <laughs> of course, why not? They have a ton of durian here. I'm not exactly sure what the type of it is, but the price is pretty cheap. It's only uh, 250 pesos for a kilo. So I think we're gonna get a fairly small one because we're pretty full after that meal, but uh, it smells so good. Yeah, we got our durian from Davao City, uh, which is in the south of the Philippines, mm -hmm. and they're famous for their durian, so it smells really good, looks really good. Looks really good. Okay, okay. So we're actually directly inside of the fruit market here. So we've got our durian from Davao City, as I mentioned. I would recommend you go for this piece. The small pieces tend to be a little bit more sweet. So should I go get ahead. which one? This, this one? This small piece right here, I would recommend. This one? Yeah. And then give it a big smell this first. Small. It's actually not oh. too fragrant. <laughs> There's definitely a bit of a durian smell. Let's try. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> Mm. Mm. You like it? I like it. Oh, it's so creamy. Mm. It's sweet. This one's sweet. Not as much like of a fermented flavor. Oh man, check that out. That is seriously creamy durian. Oh man, it's good. You like it? <laughs> yeah, it's like really it. good, right? Mm. So, lots of first mm. for Sabrina and I, and a first for you today. Yeah. yeah. First for Filipino food, and first for durian. A good ripe one, sweet mm. one. So Hello Hello is just the mixed ice, all kinds of different ingredients they put in there, but one of the coolest things they're doing is they're using like a hand shaved ice, all manual, and it's a really hidden spot. You gotta go through the narrow front of the shop to get into what honestly looks like just their house. I think this is just their home. <laughs> Look at the table, it's like my dining table at home. Let's sit down and eat. Chewie, how many of these ingredients can you identify in this uh... Hello Hello? Maybe I'll just take a guess, like around 10. <laughs> 10 ingredients. Yeah. There's beans, yeah. there's uh, banana, ice cream, jellies, and you know, there's a proper way of mixing halo halo. Oh, am I doing it wrong? I'm starting to. No, it's to okay, it's okay. Just a, a quick tip. Yeah. So, your spoon, the end of your spoon, you go to the 
mo- to the deepest bottom point. point. Yeah. The bottom point. And then slowly. Okay. You'll work just, your way up from yeah, the bottom. Work your way up. There's also a big chunk of, of flan there too. Yeah. I think I lost mine. This is a kind of u- unique because usually in Halo Halo in the Philippines, they're just using like one fourth of flan. Oh. This is like a whole yeah. hockey puck. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> wow, I love the Canadian reference. It is like a hockey puck. <laughs> yeah. All right, man, let's give it a try. Okay. Ice cream, ice, ube. milk, ube. Ube, ube, everything. Oh man, okay, tons cheers. of ingredients. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, eh? oh, it's not like super, super sweet. Mm. I taste that flam, milk, get the crunch from the ice, get a piece of this ice cream here. The first time I tried this, uh, there's a lot of variations of halo halo, but this one, I love the milk. Mm. There's a, like a sweet milky yeah. texture and it's creamy. like a, a creamy yeah. chocolate. And I feel like I'm just sitting at like my grandmother's house or mm. something, right? <laughs> after this, I'll go upstairs and sleep. Yeah, after this, I'll go take a nap upstairs. They've been around since 1960. Can you believe that? Yep. Serving Halo Halo for what? 60 uh, something uh, years. Uh, we're bad in math, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs>